my booktube. I'm here today with my review of The Outlander by Gil Adamson. This was published in 2007. It's uh, historical fiction and it's Canadian literature. Um, this is The Outlander. I'm going to stress the the part, not Outlander, um, which is the time travel romance. This is a totally different story. Uh, this is the story of Mary Bolton, or The Widow, um, who's running across uh, Western Canada in the early 20th century and uh, she's fleeing from her brother-in-laws after she's murdered her husband and that's pretty much what the blurb on the back says it's not a spoiler um this is I want to say it's a decent read uh, because there were a few issues that I had with it but overall I really enjoyed reading it so I want to start uh, with kind of like my complaints about it and then tell you about the good stuff because I want to end on a good note I want you to feel like this was a good book because it is really um, so my first issue is with the uh, pacing of the book um, the time lapse between uh, certain things so we are given two points of references of time kind of um, you, you're, you're, the, the thing about this book is that you're not given a whole bunch of information, you kind of have to work a lot out for yourself. Um, but between those two points of times, which should really be maybe about three, four, maybe five months, it seems like a lot more time has passed than that. Um, like a lot of time has passed. Um, and it, I think that's kind of not good. I think it shouldn't feel like that much time has passed. It should be you know, more realistic, I guess would be the term. Um, and then I want to talk about the writing, because I have good things and bad things to say about the writing. Um, it's, this is the first novel Gil Adamson has published, um, and you can kind of tell that, um, because there are some really beautiful scenes. Um, there's one scene that describes a preacher building his house, and it's just, it's really well done, and it really made me want to either meet him, live in the house, or emulate him and build my own house, like all kind of wonky and crooked and, and with, you know, things, you know, the floor slanted because, you know, you're not an architect or, or a builder or a carpenter, you're just kind of putting things together as you want. Um, I thought it was fascinating. But there are also some um, quite jarring anachronisms and a analogies and symbolisms that kind of t took me out of the reading experience a bit. That kind of slowed it down a bit for me because I'd stop and be like, it was weird. Like it not like in a like not like in a plot sense, but in a wording sense, or like the the, the word choices that she used in some paces. Um, and also the book could have really do with some editing, like cutting out unnecessary scenes or shortening them a lot. Um, that kind of thing. Um, but overall the writing is is really quite nice. It's 390 pages, which is why I think that it could be you know, chalk down to maybe 300 or so pages instead. Uh, my personal pre uh, preference anyways. Now I'm going to talk about the really good things because there is, it's, the characters are the reason you're, you're going to want to read this book. Um, Mary Bolton herself, um, I believe, as I said before, she doesn't really come out with pointing directly at things and being very obvious about things you kind of she expects the reader Gil Adamson expects the reader to come to a lot of their own conclusions and thoughts instead of stating it outright so I think Mary may uh have a dissociative disorder now I'm not a psychologist or anything like that I have no experience with that but you know from what I know about that kind of stuff I think she does have something because she often she often loses track of time um, ends up somewhere she doesn't expect, wakes up somewhere she doesn't expect. She does things that are kind of out of character, she has hallucinations, like all these kind of interesting things are going on. Um, but as I said also we're, we're 20th century, early 20th century, she's in the middle of nowhere, so like it's, it's, it's not going to be come out and stated, you know, she has this or that or, you know, she, there is something, you know, going on there that we, we need to address or something. Um, as well, the secondary characters are also fascinating. Um, the people that she meets and that we get to spend time with with her are really are really quite cool. And she does this thing, Gil Adamson, Adamson, not the character, does this thing where she refers to people not always by their names, but sometimes by descriptions. 
So sometimes we'll have Mary did this, Mary did that, sometimes it'll be the widow did this, the widow did that. Or even the secondary characters, the preacher, the ridge runner, like they all have names but they're sometimes referred to by those titles instead. Um, and the best thing about this that I really really enjoyed was that we have Mary Bolton who's essentially homeless. She can't go back to her house with her husband because I mean she killed him and you know she's a wanted woman and she can't go back to her childhood home because again she's a murderess and um, she can't go back to her father without being arrested or killed or lynched or something. Um, so we get to see these people that she spends time with in their homes and their homes are so unique and encapsulate who they are and it's really quite interesting the way that she does that. Um, so for example, um, as I said the preacher again he's building his own his own house with absolutely no experience or knowledge of how to build a house um, and then we we spend time with a with a man who who camps um, who lives this nomadic lifestyle and the camp that he sets up and where things are and uh, it's just really fascinating that she she does that um, and that's why I think you really should read this novel is for the characters um, so that's The Outlander by Gil Adamson uh, let me know if you've read this book and what you thought about it and thank you for watching <laughs>